Good afternoon, our dear students. Today we continue our cycle of lectures from for propedeutics of internal medicine for uh, for students of third course. Uh, today uh, and in general this week, I am glad to have my work and have my, all my lectures from Kharkiv. I am at home. I am in our lovely city. Uh, it's not for the all time, of course. I return just for several days, but I'm glad to see here. Of course, here it is still uh, a little bit danger, uh, but I uh, sure uh, and and I wish you to in the nearest future return in Kharkiv, and I will be glad to see every students. Uh, in Kharkiv and in Karazin uh, University in a very, very short time. Let's have our lecture. Bronco-obstructive syndrome. Uh, uh, objective of our lecture to coverage modern concept, the course uh, and uh, diagnostic of bronchial obstruction. And here on the scheme you see three main uh, three main syndromes, three main pathophysiological waves uh, that lead to bronchial obstruction. First of it, it is emphysema with uh, alveolar wall destruction and overinflation. Another uh, big uh, cycle here on this skin and part of physiological mechanism. It is chronic bronchitis, it is chronic inflammation of bronchi with a productive cough and airway inflammation. And next uh, cycle uh, and third part of physiological way uh, leading to bronchial obstruction, it is asthma. Uh, it is reversible obstruction due to spasm of bronchi. It goes with bronchial hyperresponsiveness triggered by allergies, infections, etc. Plan of our today's lecture. It is it will be short introduction. We will discuss urgency and significance of the problem. We will discuss definition and causes etiology, pathogenesis, symptoms and classification, differential diagnosis, diagnostic tests, surveillance and prevention of bronchial obstruction. Uh, what I want to say in introduction. Uh, BOS or bronchoobstructive syndrome, it is a pathological condition with ear flow limitation during breathing. Approximately 100 heterogeneous diseases are associated with bronchial obstruction. Uh, in asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, shortly we will name it COPD, it is leading clinical syndrome. Airway obstruction consists of reversible and irreversible components. Yes, more reversible it is asthma, irreversible it is emphysema COPD. Uh, with an inflammation as the main pathogenetic factor, inflammation of bronchi. Developing under the influence of infections, it can be, and very often it is allergic, it can be uh, psychical uh, and uh, neurogenic triggers. Moreover, the presence of viral and other respiratory infection deteriorates the cause of bronchial obstruction, leading the progression of the disease. In most cases, bronchoobstructive syndrome prognosis is serious and depends on the cause of bronchial obstruction, on the forms of the disease, timely conducted pathogenetic therapy and prevention. Uh, in childhood, respiratory disease occupied one of the first places. Yes, bronchial asthma, first of all, and other respiratory disease like pneumonia, chronic bronchitis, uh, they are leading in general in morbidity uh, in children and pediatric practice. Hereditary factors, environmental pollution, social factors play an important role in it. It leads to growth of bronchoobstructive syndrome. 
In recent years, there, is, uh, there has been a marked increase in diseases that occur with an obstructive symptom, which is very diverse in nature and may be manifestation of many diseases. Manifestation of the syndrome usually occurs on the background of acute respiratory viral infection. It takes a severe course and is accompanied by signs of respiratory failure. Early diagnosis of the diseases that cause the obstruction, timely pathogenetic treatment and prevention reduce or eliminates clinical manifestations of the syndrome, and thus improves the quality of life of patients. Uh, okay, the significance of the problem. First of all, uh, bronch obstructive synd syndrome needs in uh, other uh, bronch obstructive syndrome uh, and patients with this syndrome very often suffer from inadequate diagnosis. Not for all patients, and very often uh, bronch obstructive syndrome diagnosed in some irreversible stages, not a very early. Another problem, it is a lack of comprehensive program of monitoring of patients. One more problem, it is a lack of continuity of treatment in the hospital and continuum of treatment uh, on an outpatient basis because uh, most patients uh, need for very long or even lifelong treatment. They need for rehabilitation and social adaptation. Uh, let's give definition. Bronco obstructive syndrome uh, is a collective term that includes a number of symptoms or clinical manifestation of bronchial obstruction with underlying nerve or occlusion of the airway. Clinically, severe bronco obstructive syndrome is the most common in children, especially young children. But it is not a rare disease among the adult population. Its emergence and development is influenced by various factors, primarily respiratory viral infection. Early diagnosis and treatment of bronchoobstructive syndrome is a therapeutic practice can significantly reduce the number of complications of the disease, improve survival and quality of life patients. Uh, okay, syndrome of bronchial obstruction. Uh, one more, more short uh, definition, it is a complex of symptoms that develops due to limitation of air passing through the narrowed, narrowed airway or increasing of resistance against airflow during ventilation. And schematically, you see, for example, like inflamed and thickened bronchi wall uh, uh, become more resistant and can't uh, uh, make normal ventilation, normal airflow. In Western literature, this clinical symptom complex is currently called wheezing windmill syndrome. The term both or bronchoobstructive syndrome cannot be used as an independent diagnosis. It is syndrome. We can't uh, put in diagnosis bronchoobstructive syndrome. We should put some disease. Uh, like a heart failure, yes, it not separate uh, diagnosis, it always have some cause, the same the bronco obstruction. Uh, and these causes, most of them we name, it is chronic bronchitis, it is COPD, it is asthma, etc. Bronco obstructive syndrome is a symptom complex of any disease by etiology of which is necessary to determine in all causes of the development of bronchial obstruction. Uh, Bronchoobstructive syndrome lays in basis of asthma, bronchoectasis, bronchitis, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD, cystic fibrosis, etc. It is a main disease that is associated with bronchoobstruction. As you see this scheme, uh, with three rounds, uh, emphysema, chronic bronchitis and asthma. Uh, and you see... Uh, where is COPD? COPD it is a, uh, it is a most severe uh, disease from all these named disease, and it usually in the middle of all three cycles. Uh, 
causes of wrong obstruction. Most often obstructive conditions occur in patients with familiar history of allergies, especially who often suffer from respiratory infections more than six times per year. Another uh, cause and a risk factor it is smoking, including passive smoking. It is the most important uh, etiological factor for, C for COPD. Uh, in causes, uh, we can uh, define serious asthma symptoms with frequent exacerbations for a long time, which have not been improving with treatment. Uh, more, it is long-term exposure of lung irritants, like air pollution uh, in industrial dust, chemical fumes, etc. Uh, another risk factor it is preterm birth that leads to lung damage. damage. Uh, it uh, can uh, lead to such a serious situation like neonatal chronic lung disease. Uh, another cause it is family, family history of emphysema and inherited factors G including alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Etiology of bronchobstruction. Acute stenosis, uh, laryngotracheal bronchitis of viral, bacterial and viral etiology of diphtheria. Moreover, it can be peritonsillar abscess, retropharyngeal abscess, epiglotti, uh, congenital stridor, hypertrophy of the tonsils and adenoids, cysts, uh, hemangioma and papillomatosis of the larynx. Uh, in infants, aspiration uh, caused by swallowing disorders, congenital abnormalities of the nasopharynx, uh, chalasia and achalasia of esophagus, tracheobronchial fistulas, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Uh, malformations of trachea, bronchi, respiratory distress syndrome, cystic fibrosis, bronchiopulmonary dysplasia, immunodeficiency, and not, uh, intrauterine infections. Pathogenesis of bronchial obstruction. It depends on etiology of the disease. Uh, you see how a lot causes, how a lot of etiologies can be, and depending on this etiology, it can be different pathogenesis. A pathogenetic mechanism can be divided into two big groups, functional or reversible and uh, non-functional or irreversible. Functional. It is bronchospasm, inflammatory infiltration, edema, violation of mucociliary clearance and hypersecretion. It um, uh, all spasm and all changes are typical for inflammation. All of them are reversible. Two irreversible mechanisms uh, cause congenital stenosis of the bronchi and others. Uh, the main factor of pathogenesis of first, first group or reversible is inflammation, what I told you, which can be both infections, infectious and allergic. The mediator of an acute phase of inflammation is interleukin-1. It is produced by phagocytic cells and tissue macrophages under the action of infection, allergy, and promotes the release of first type mediators like histamine, serotonin, into peripheral blood. These mediators are constantly present in the granules of mast cells and basophiles that ensure very rapid biological effects. Besides histamine, an important role in the pathogenesis of inflammation is placed by mediators of second type, like eicosanoids, generated during the early inflammatory response. Uh, it is due to histamine, leukotrienes and anti-inflammatory prostaglandins that we observe enhancement of vascular permeability edema of bronchial mucosa, hypersecretion of mucus viscous and uh, bronchoconstriction. 
by the duration, bronchoobstructive syndrome can be acute uh, when uh, both clinical manifestations persist for more than uh, persist for more than ten days. It can be protracted, uh, recurrent, and continuously recurring. According to the severity, the obstruction can be identified as mild, moderate, severe, and latent bronchial obstruction. Common symptoms of bronchoobstructive syndrome. It is prolonged exhale. Uh, when uh, you examine the patient, you can pay attention to prolonged phase of exhale. It can be wheezing, noisy breathing uh, due to expiratory dyspnea. Uh, this respiratory rate uh, 50 and more per minute. Uh, it is a maximum rate, of course. Uh, asthmatic fits auxiliary muscles participating in breathing, that is additional sign and very specific sign of bronchoobstruction. It is poorly productive cough, decrease in oxygen partial, partial pressure, depression and anxiety, weight loss, tiredness, tiredness fatigue, swollen ankles, limitation its inactivity and lifestyle. Mild bronchoobstructive syndrome. Symptoms of it. It is wheezing on auscultation. No breathlessness and cyanosis at rest. Uh, it is in taste of blood gases are within normal range. No uh, changes in gases. Uh, external respiration function in dices are moderately reduced. State of health of the patient as a rule does not suffer. Uh, moderate severity of bronchoobstructive syndrome. Uh, it is typical for it. Expiratory or mixed dyspnea at rest. A cyanosis of nasolabial triangle. In, uh, in drawing of compelant places of the chest, wheezing is audible at the distance. Uh, expiratory rate indices are reduced, but generalized function bronchial obstruction is slightly broken. Like a uh, partial pressure of oxygen more than 60 milliliters hydroargum and par partial pressure of carbon dioxide is less than 45 millimeter hydroargum. Uh, and severe course of bronchoobstructive syndrome. State of health of the patient suffers. It is characterized by noisy shortness of breath with auxiliary muscles participation presence of cyanosis. Uh, external respiratory function indices are sharply reduced. There are signs of generalized functional bronchial obstruction. Uh, it is changes in, uh, in gas analysis with partial pressure of oxygen less than 60 mm hydroargum and pressure of carbon dioxide more than 45 mm hydroargum. And uh, which conditions can uh, be in bronchoobstruction? We named them, uh, named them already, but let's compare with, uh, it with each other. Here are the main of them. It is chronic bronchitis, bronchoectasis, asthma, and bronchiolitis. It is some group of chronic bronchitis with uh, damaging of small bronchi. Main signs, what I told, for chronic bronchitis, bronchoectasis and asthma, it is bronchus. For bronchiolitis, it is bronchial or small bronchi. Uh, when changes for chronic bronchitis, it is hyperplasia and hypersecretion of mucous glands. For bronchoectasis, it is dilation and scaring uh, of airways. For asthma, it is smooth muscle hyperplasia, excessive mucus, inflammation and constriction. For bronchiolitis, it is inflammatory scaring and bronchial obliteration. Uh, difference in causes. By the causes for uh, chronic bronchitis, it is the most typical tobacco smoking and air pollutants. For bronchoectasis, the main cause here it is persistent severe infection. For asthma, immunologic or idiopathic, 
bronchiolitis, is tobacco smoking and air pollutants like for bronch all other bronchitis. And by the symptoms, the main symptoms for chronic bronchitis, productive cough. Uh, for bronchoectasis, it is cough and uh, purulent sputum and fever. For asthma, episodic wheezing, cough and dyspnea. And for bronchiolitis, it is cough and dyspnea. Uh, difference uh, in conditions of bronchoobstructive syndrome. Uh, in asthma, uh, bronchial tub tubes or airways are hyper-responsive and usually triggered by breathing in uh, things uh, in the air such as dust, pollen, etc. These recurring episodes of wheezing, breathlessness, chest tightness, coughing, uh, coughing particularly at night or in early morning. A bronchoectasis uh, refers to abnormal, irreversible dilation of bronchi caused by destructive and inflammatory changes in the air walls. Uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD it is characterized by airflow uh, limitation that is not fully reversible. A uh, differential diagnosis between COPD is in and asthma uh, they are uh, quite uh, the same clinically with goes with cough with dyspnea uh, and uh, how to different COPD and asthma for COPD it is a more specific onset in a mild midlife uh, in comparison to asthma, where the onset more typical in early life, uh, often, the ch often uh, during childhood. For COPD, symptoms slowly progressive, uh, it's typical long smoking history, display during exercise, and changes are largely irreversible airflow limitation. For asthma, it is the opposite. Symptoms vary from day to day. Symptoms uh, can be and more even more specific at night and early morning. It associated with allergy, rhinitis and eczema also present. Uh, here a typical uh, family history of asthma and largely reversible airflow limitation. Uh, diagnostic function test. The most typical test it is uh, spirometry. It is one type pulmonary test. Uh, spirometry is a simple test to measure how much volume and how fast but flow you can move air into and out of your lungs. It looks nearly the same. It is such a device with a tube and a uh, patient can uh, make an uh, air floor uh, in, uh, inside the lungs and outside from the lungs into this tube and uh, this device can measure volume and floor of this air. Uh, what the results of function test mean? Uh, usually uh, you, for example, you can blow out 3.1 liters in the first second of, uh, uh, of your uh, expiration. That's about as much air as would fit in one and a half to liters bottles of soda. Uh, for example, people like you should able to blow out at least 4.3 liters of air in one second. And according to this, uh, to this parameter, to this volume, just for this volume, you can uh, you can different uh, the stage of asthma. For example, it is uh, here for this volume. It is moderate asthma, nearly 60-79 lung function. Uh, and schematically results of spirometry you can see here. Uh, for example, uh, in first picture, uh, you see a scheme of spirometry of health per person. Uh, you see volume and tide of and time of airflow, uh, and parameters, uh, main parameters of spirometry. It is first vital capacity or FVC. 
uh, forced expiratory volume in the first second of expiration or FEV1 -F -E uh, uh, and their relation uh, between FEV1 and FVC. Uh, here uh, on first picture you see a normal signs and like an example scheme of spirometry in patient with obstructive lung diseases you see that it is uh, much more lower volume uh, it is not such a rapid increase of airflow during expiration and uh, levels of uh, forced vital capacity forced expiratory volume uh, during first second and their relation are decreased it is typical for obstructive tank and according to this uh, uh, indices in spirometry we can classify COPD for example a chronic pulmonary disease obstructive this classification we name gold classification gold one or mild COPD stage it when the spirometry uh, is normal um, uh, forced expiratory volume in first second more than 80 percent and re, uh, coefficient, coefficient uh, less than 0 0.7 uh, for moderate gold 2 forced expiratory volume uh, in first second will be from 50 to 80 percent uh, for gold 3 or severe COPD stage from uh, 30 to 50 percent and gold 4 very severe it is uh, forced expiratory volume in one second less than 30 percent and for all of them relation between forced expiratory volume in first second and forced vital capacity less than 0.7 Okay, a diagnostic function test uh, we can do with flow volume law. It is a plot of inspiratory and expiratory flow, uh, like a y axis against volume, x axis, during the performance of maximally forced inspiratory and expiratory maneuvers. The patient is instructed to take a full inspiration in the lung capacity, exhale, exhale forcefully and completely into the mouthpiece to residual volume, and then inspire forcefully and fully back the total lung capacity. Typically, a flow volume loop needs to be requested specifically as an order for spirometry frequently yields just an expiratory portion. The normal expiratory portion, portion of the flow volume curve is characterized by a rapid rise uh, to the peak flow rate, followed by nearly linear fall in flow the patient exhale toward uh, residual volume. The inspiratory curve in this case, in the contrast, is relatively symmetrical, saddle-shaped curve. The flow rate as midpoint of vital capacity between total lung capacity and residual volume, known as a forced expiratory flow 15, like FAF 15, yeah, is normally slightly less than a flow rate in the midpoint of inspiration, known as a forced inspiratory flow 50, FIF uh, 15. Thus, the ratio between a FAF and FIF is normally less than 1. And here are the examples of this loop. First uh, loop, it is a, a loop of normal person, young person, nearly uh, 20, uh, 20 years. After it, it goes uh, a loop with a mild obstructive syndrome. After it, severe obstruction with a very significant upper part, uh, decrease of upper part of loop. Uh, and you see uh, the variable uh, extra uh, thoracic stenosis. Uh, in the lower row, uh, first picture, you see a normal uh, loop too, but it's typical for more aged people. Uh, second picture, it is moderate and severe obstruction can be. Uh, next picture, it is restrictive type when it is symmetrical decreasement of upper and lower loop. And last one, it is variable intrathoracic stenosis. It rare case too. 
Uh, and uh, for diagnosis and bronchial obstruction, not for bronchial obstruction, but for confirming it causes, we use visualization, like for example, chest X-ray. It can detect cancer infection of air collecting in the space around a lung, which can cause a lung collapse. They can also show chronic lung conditions such as emphysema or cystic fibrosis, as well as complications related to these conditions. And on the picture you see examples of positive chest radiographs for indication of chest pain, accounting for approximately 12% of the total exams performed. And you see here, uh, for example, first picture with pneumothorax, second with a round phenomena, and uh, perihelar inflammation, very good. Uh, uh, it very uh, visible in the last third picture. Uh, another test, it is arterial blood gas. I told you that partial pressure oxygen, partial pressure carbon dioxide, uh, in general, this testing we named arterial blood gas. It is a blood test to measure the acidity or pH and levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide from the atrium. The test is used to check the function of patient's lungs and how well they are able uh, to pour oxygen into the blood and remove carbon dioxide. This test is commonly performed in the uh, ICU and ER setting. However, arterial blood gases can be drawn on any patient or any flow depending on their diagnosis. And a uh, table with normals for pH uh, and partial pressure of uh, carbon dioxide, oxygen and carbon trioxide. Uh, it means you an accurate reflection of ability of the lungs to transfer oxygen to the blood. Low partial pressure of oxygen represents hypoxemia and can initiate hyperventilation. You see here such norms for pH. It is from 7.33 to 7.45. Uh, less abnormal, more uh, less acidosis, more alkalosis. And for partial pressure, uh, oxygen more than 90 millimeters, carbon dioxide from 35 to 55 millimeters hydrargyl, and carbon trioxide from 80 to 24 milliequivalents per liter. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide. We can measure it in millimeters hydrargyl or in kilopascals. Indicates the effectiveness of alveolar ventilation. Alveolar ventilation determines uh, pressure of CO2. Hyperventilation results in a decreased pressure of CO2, hypocapnia. Whereas hypoventilation increases uh, pressure of CO2. We name it hypercapnia. Changes in ventilation may occur in patients with primary pulmonary disease, central nervous system impairment, or may occur as a compensatory change in patients with metabolic disturbances. Uh, for more simple checking of, uh, pre of pressure of oxygen, a partial pressure, we name it saturation uh, of oxygen. We use such a device like pulse oximeter. After COVID-19 pandemic, maybe everyone uh, see this, uh, this uh, gadget, uh, see this device, and maybe everyone is uh, trying to use this device because it is not invasive, it's very quick and simple. It measures percentage of hemoglobin actually carrying oxygen, which is why 94 to 100% is known. The test can be useful in finding out where the oxygen treatment is needed, but it provides less information than arterial blood gas test. Of course, it's less informative and less specific. It's not uh, such a correct, but there you uh, need to do some such invasive and long and uh, more expensive test and then, uh, then it is a gadget then just fix on a finger and in several seconds it show you uh, 
not such uh, an accurate but relatively correct uh, result of uh, saturation or pressure of oxygen. And here you see the table with normals of saturation. Uh, I told that norma is more than 90, 95 and uh, uh, lower it is the stages of uh, severity of hypoxia. Uh, different difference between arterial blood gas and oximetry uh, uh, measures. Arterial blood gases, I told that it is invasive. The results are delayed. It's, you don't have immediate result. Assessment intermittent, intermittent. Assesses oxygenation, ventilation, and acid base uh, status. Uh, and uh, in comparison, for example, pulse oximetry access oxygenation only, uh, but results uh, here are immediate and it is not non-invasive. Arterial blood gases corrections routinely made by hyper or hypothermia. For pulse oximetry, it's not such correct uh, because results misleading in the presence of alkalosis, hyper or hypothermia, carboxyhemoglobin, and other factors. For arterial blood gases, accuracy established, uh, and for pulse oximetry, uh, accuracy in some clinical settings uncertain. And for arterial blood cases, it is more expensive test, pulse oximetry less expensive, but with a question. Why question is here? Because, for example, for um, individual checking of pulse oximetry, for example, for patient at home, patient uh, have to buy this uh, device. And of course, this device uh, is more expensive for patient than one test. But if this patient need a lot of check-ins, or for example, this gadget usually use uh, very often using uh, in hospitals and uh, especially in uh, for monitoring uh, critical emergent patient uh, by the number of patient, of course, is not such an expensive. Okay, uh, we usually do for patient with bronchial obstruction ACG because uh, cardiovascular system and heart uh, is suffering from hypoxia and from for bronchial obstruction uh, it is one of the first systems that the same sensitive for changes uh, than the respiratory system. Okay, ECG. Uh, changes occur in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. They usually occur due to the presence of hyperexplained emphysematous lungs within the chest. The long-term effects of hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction up the right side of the heart, causing pulmonary hypertension and subsequent right atrial and right ventricular hypertrophy. It, the, it is the thing that we usually name core pulmonale. Please remember from the lecture uh, from cardiovascular system or from uh, ECG basics uh, how on ECG looks core pulmonale. Uh, here an example of ECG. It demonstrates many of features of chronic pulmonary disease. First of all, it is right part of QRS axis. It is more than uh, plus 90 degrees. Who are not understanding what I'm now about, please return uh, returns return to lecture about ACG basics. I explained all these things there. Uh, here we can find peaked P waves in the inferior lid, uh, more than 2.5 millimeters. We name it uh, such type of wave P pulmonale, with the rightward P wave axis in, uh, inverted in the AVL. What is very typical for core pulmonale? Uh, more, we can see here a clockwise rotation of heart with dilate RS transition point, like transitional lead V5. It have to be V4. Uh, it is absence R rays in the right precordial leads. Um, it is SV1, SV2, SV3 pattern. And it is low voltages in the left sided leads 1, AVL, and V5, V6. That is mostly caused by uh, uh, pulmonary emphysema. Once 
one more example of ACG. It shows multifocal atrial tachycardia. Uh, it is arrhythmia, the typical uh, complication of uh, pulmonary disease from the heart and from the core pulmonale. Uh, here you see rapid irregular rhythm with multiple P wave morphologies. If you pay attention, uh, try to find P waves, all of them, they are the different, have the different amplitude, the different duration and the different form. Uh, right axis deviation, dominant R wave in V1 and deep S wave in V6. It suggests right ventricular hypertrophy due to core pulmonality. Uh, okay, diffusing capacity of the lungs. A test of diffusing capacity of the lungs for carbon monoxide, also known as a transfer factor for carbon monoxide, is one uh, of the most clinically valuable tests of lung function. Uh, the diffusing, uh, diffusing capacity measures the ability of lungs uh, of the lungs to transfer gas from inhaled air to red blood cells in the pulmonary capillaries. The DLSO test is convenient and easy to patient to perform. The 10 seconds of breath holding required for DLSO maneuver is easier for most patients to perform than the forced exhalation required for spirometry. The following division is frequently employed in clinical practice for the assessment of reduction of transfer factor. Uh, and we can, here you see table with classification and severity uh, of bronch obstruction due to DLCO reduction. Normate more than 75% and it can be up to 140%. Mild decrease from 60 to 74, moderate decrease from 60 to 55, uh, 59% and severe decrease more than 40% of DLCO. Okay, more visualization, computer tomography, L of the early detection of emphysema, uh, for, like for bronchoobstructive obstructive syndrome. CT also makes it possible to quantify the total amount of emphysema in the lungs, which is important in order to precisely estimate the severity of the disease. Those ability of CT are important in monitoring the cause of disease and attempts are to prevent its further progression. Here you see example of CT of patient with emphysema. Uh, surveillance and prevention. National surveillance systems should primarily focus on monitoring the following, burning in the mind, the importance of developing and implementing simple methodologies for providing objective measures of trends. It is cause specific mortality, risk factor prevalence, certain morbidity data like hospital admissions and consultations due to common respiratory conditions as well as therapeutic trends. Standard indicators should be adopted. This may include lung function measurements, disease progression, absenteeism from school or work, and hospitalizations. And what about prevention? Here you see a scheme of primary prevention of bronco obstruction. Uh, it lies in reduction or avoidance of personal exposure to primary risk factors to be studied during pregnancy and childhood. What is it? It is tobacco smoking. Uh, it's not modifiable, but we should know about it. Low birth weight and other risk factors that we told about you. All of them uh, you can see here but uh, it was noted that more research is needed before effectiveness strategies for primary prevention of asthma can be established and secondary and tertiary prevention or bronco obstruction uh, it means that uh, we uh, want to prevent uh, prevent uh, more acute and more severe stages of disease in patients with present bronco obstruction. It lies in early detection of uh, occupational asthma, early detection of COPD, and prevention of COPD. 
the main way you can see in this scheme you can stop and uh, and make some notes for yourself about a secondary prevention of bronco obstruction and especially COPD and asthma. For today that's all uh, and uh, as usual if you have uh, comments or questions or proposition for example you can leave it under the video on our Facebook page or in comments under the YouTube video. Uh, and uh, uh, I ask everyone who listening all my lectures uh, leave your name and number of group uh, in comments under the video for just for me for my uh, for my information uh, for today that's all and goodbye.